Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, picked up this uh, Wilton 4-inch uh, bullet type vise. They call it a bullet vise because it's kind of enclosed in here. It looks like a bullet nickname for this style. Real nice vise. It's really in, appears to be in pretty good shape, but for whatever reason, uh, the paint's all gone on this thing. It's gotten rusty. It's obviously been out in the weather for a while. Uh, but it appears to have seen very little use and uh, we're gonna basically take this thing apart uh, Tear it down to its components. We're gonna clean it up really well uh, We're either gonna paint it or powder coat it. I haven't decided yet. We'll get to that at a later point in time and uh, We're basically gonna restore this and, and bring it back to new shape. So anyway stick with me and uh, we'll go through the process of restoring a Wilton bullet vise so step one of this assembly, we're going to remove uh, the outside jaw on this. So we're just going to basically wind this out. I'm going to slide that in so it doesn't get hang out too far. This vise has got a pretty good reach there, depth. When you come all the way out with it, we're still screwing here. So uh, getting close to being out now. There we go. All right, so that's got the outside jaw. Good to see um, inside of this. It's rusty on the outside, but that actually looks pretty clean. Um, you know, we'll have to get the screw out to take a good look at it, but the screw looks to be in decent shape as well. Let's go ahead and continue tearing this down. So the screw fits up through the vise and it's captured here on the end. And the way it's captured is there's a little clip that goes around this. It's held in place with three screws. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and take these screws out. And uh, while I'm doing this, one thing, anytime you're doing a restoration project of any kind, even on something simple, uh, like a little vise like this, as you're disassembling it, have a digital camera in the shop with you and take lots and lots of pictures at every imaginable angle so that when you go to put it back together, you will have a very good reference on how it came apart. And you would think that would not be a big deal, particularly on something small like this. But based on experience, guys, you know, sometimes you'll start a project like this and it may be months, if not years, before you actually put it back together. And you say, well, I'll remember how to do that. Well, uh, my memory's not that great. Uh, so, and it's always nice to have those reference photos uh, to go back to and look at. And when, in the age of digital cameras, take lots and lots of pictures. Uh, don't just take a few, get some close-ups. Any imaginable angle, let's go ahead and take a picture. It doesn't cost you anything. And trust me, more is better uh, when it comes to putting these back together. Now we need to get the screws out on the uh, the the pad here in the in, on the jaw. Uh, when I first got this, the the slots in these screws had been kind of just peened over a little bit from gripping stuff in the vise. So I took a little cold chisel and just kind of tapped these with a hammer and kind of reopened up uh, the slot in here. And um, hopefully that's going to let me get in here with my screwdriver now. And let's see, oh, that one there just looks like it's gonna come out pretty easy. I saw it moving around when I was tapping it, so I, I thought I had broke that one loose. I may replace these. Get you a little cup or something to put all your hardware in. All right, that one's coming too. It's a little tighter. I'm going to take a little punch and get on the back side here, see if I can drive that off. It's got a little pin in there, and I think that's kind of holding it in place. There we 
go. Yeah, see so there's a pin here in the middle that drives up on. Very good. So that's pretty much got the uh, jaw disassembled. Uh, there are some pins holding this key in the bottom. I don't really see a need to take those off though. Uh, so we're just going to leave those in place. It's got a number down here, 4-46, stamped in the bottom of that. I don't know. That could be a uh, month and a year that this was made. I'm not sure. Uh, very well could be a date code. Or it could be a part number. So now let's go ahead and remove the uh, jaw off the back side here. Uh, these screws are in better shape, uh, but tight. So I've got one of these old timey screwdrivers. I really like this screwdriver. I can get more torque on the handle than a regular screwdriver because it's kind of that oval shaped. But this particular one I like too because it's got this uh, hex area on there. So I can easily take a, a wrench, put on here, and get some extra torque for a job like this right here. Let's see if that'll break loose. There it goes, that's all it took. It's more than I could get out of my wrist. But that was just enough to break it loose. See if the other one will come. There, I got that one by hand. Here we go. All right, next step here, on the back, uh, there's a little dust cap down here on the end. All it does is just to keep trash out. This is where the screw and everything goes in, uh, but we need to knock this uh, little dust cap out. So I've just got a piece of metal. I'm gonna run it up through the uh, nut up inside the vise, and that just pops right out, as you see. And it looks like someone has dinged that up before but uh, should be fine. The next step we wanna do here is to, there's inside of the vise here is the nut that the screw uh, actually engages and this nut will come out. Uh, and it is usually pinned into uh, the, the body here. Uh, but depending on which model Wilton vise you have and what year it was made, they, they pin these together a little bit differently. Most of the ones that I've seen actually have two pins, one on either side, and they come through the center and uh, actually fall out of the hole in the middle. So you punch out one side and punch out the other. However, some of the nuts, there's actually a pin that goes up underneath the bottom. It kind of goes up underneath it, and it's one pin that goes all the way through. So you need to kind of look. If you look inside here, you can see the holes in there where those pins are gonna drop out. Now, this one was so rusty that I couldn't see the pins from the outside. So I just took it over to my uh, wire wheel on my grinder and I just kind of buffed it a little bit. Now I can see the outline of these pins so I know where to, uh, to punch them out from. So uh, let's get this uh, set up to punch. I'm going to put a block of wood there, put a block of wood there to kind of support this thing. And we've got a punch. I can see the outline right there. There it goes. I don't know if you can see it recessed down there. Go to a bigger hammer. All right, I thought that was gonna fall out the inside, but actually it's gone across and it's fell into the hole on the other side. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is punch this all the way through. I can't get that one out from this side. So I'm um, we'll probably have to find a longer punch and uh, we'll continue punching that through. Right, let's see if we can punch it on through. All 
All right, one of the pins fell out and I need a longer punch again. Well, this uh, turned out to be more challenging than I thought I had to go find a piece of metal here that's just smaller than that. We ain't got far to go, let's hope this gets it. There it goes. Wow, that joker was tough. That comes right out, good deal. The nut should come right out of there, just like so. And finally, this little nose piece should come off down here. And I'm just gonna use the end of my hammer, a wooden stick. And it looks like it's coming, good. There we go. So there's all the pieces uh, disassembled on a Wilton bullet vise. Um, next step for me is we're gonna take all this and put it in the um, blasting cabinet, get everything sandblasted and uh, prepped for either painting or powder coating. Again, I haven't decided which way I'm gonna go. I need to talk with our local powder coating place and see what kind of, see what they charge for this job and then we'll go from there. But uh, very, not too difficult to take apart. Had a little bit of trouble getting those pins out, uh, but even that wasn't terrible. Uh, pretty easy job. So now let's uh, get it cleaned up and put her back together. So I'm uh, getting ready to do some blasting on the uh, vise, uh, Wilton vise, and I'm changing out the media in my cabinet. Um, I've gotten some uh, new blasting media from Pro Blast, uh, TacomaCompany.com, uh, same guys that sold me the kit to rebuild my uh, blaster uh, to get a much better uh, blasting gear in here. And uh, this is a garnet uh, material. If you look at it, it's a nice uh, pink kind of color to it. Uh, good sharp corners. This ought to do an excellent job of taking that rust off of the uh, off of that particular part. So we're going to load this up in the blaster and uh, do some blasting. So out of the blasting cabinet, everything really cleaned up nice. Um, got the main castings here. Sandblasters went ahead and did the, these jaws. Thinking about replacing these with some copper jaws just so that uh, it won't be so hard on what I'm gripping. It'll be a soft jaw um, anyway. Um, 
these parts came out good. The nut, I ended up not sandblasting. I put it in the parts washer. It was covered up with grease, and the grease actually protected it from the rust pretty well. So after I cleaned it up, you know, it was pretty clean. And this is inside. I really didn't want to get any grit up inside that uh, screw, and I just decided that that was plenty good enough. Uh, it didn't need to be, we're not gonna paint this part, uh, so uh, no real reason to finish sandblasting it. So this is the actual screw that goes up into the vise, and I really don't like the way this looks. It's all really rusted and pitted. I, this is not normally painted. Normally this is just kind of polished out. It may even be plated originally, I'm not sure, but this, this needs to be worked on. Uh, and, but instead of sandblasting, what I really want to do is put this in a lathe and polish it out. Um, and then I may look at doing some plating. I'm not sure on what direction I'm going to go there yet. Uh, but I got to get this handle out, and if you notice, it's got the little ball ends on either end to keep it from coming out. And I've looked at this real close, and it looks like the ball on this end is um, driven down over this. So I, I imagine this inside part is maybe turned down a little bit, and uh, this was pressed on and maybe swaged over on the end a little bit. So I've kind of ground just a little bit off the other end where it was mushroomed. And uh, again, I could see, I think I could see anyway, a little parting line in there where the two parts come together. So I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to probably heat this uh, little end up uh, with a torch and see if I can uh, drive the main shaft uh, out of that. All right. It's coming off. So there you go, got the little ball end, just like I suspected that was turned down just a little bit and uh, on there, this is countersunk at the top and it was just kind of swaged over uh, in there. So I'm not sure if I can salvage this or I'm gonna need to make another one, but we'll, we'll take a look at that down the road. Uh, let's work on getting the other part fixed up. I've got this chucked up in the lathe and uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna polish this out with some uh, emery cloth and what have you. Uh, anytime you do any sanding or abrasive work on the lathe, uh, be sure and protect your ways. Uh, I'm always very careful when I do this, not only, uh, and sometimes you just can't get the rags on here if you're having to come in here with a carriage or whatever, but uh, at the very least, as soon as you get through um, doing any sanding work, it's, it, just take the time to clean everything up really well, make sure you're not leaving any grit behind. Uh, it's not so much a problem with getting grit on the ways. The problem is, is when the saddle and the carriage runs back over that grit. So just be sure to clean things up when you're done. Well, as you can probably see, we've got some uh, run out in this uh, where that has been bent just a little bit. Probably not going to matter. You know, we're not really turning this thing to high speed in the vice. I'm just going to go ahead and try to polish it out. I decided I really didn't like the run out on this shaft. So I've been out here kind of tweaking this on my hydraulic press. So what I've done here is I've got the, the high spot 
going straight down here. And I, I think my bend is right in this area. Uh, so I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on this. And I'm trying not to go too far, just do it a little bit at a time. And I started out with about 90 thousandths run out on the last one I had about 15. So let's see where we are now. So I've got the run out down to about 10 thousandths on this now. And uh, we went through and did some more polishing with Emory cloth. And I'm just finishing this up with a scotch right now. not perfect, but it's pretty darn close to it. Good enough for, I think, what I'm going to do. So uh, we're going to leave it with that.